Praise the Lord. Do you have a solo by the world? God bless you. You are once again welcome to this uh, wonderful program. My name is Pastor Ogonna Ogonna Omaburuwa, the Son of God, the humble Son of God. I hope you people have been blessed. In today's program, there is something I want you to watch and uh, I will come back and minister to you. Remember, this is the wind of miracles hour. But we are going to make a prophetic commentary today, a prophetic message to some certain things happening in the body of Christ. So just watch this video. I will come back and minister to you. Blood pressure is going up and I don't want to leave this world before my time. And I know you, you know I'm a gift to you and the body of Christ. It's so painful that when men of God go through strike, you are quick to throw the stone, abuse them, say all sorts of insult to them. It's good. We will receive it as a cross because that's part of our battle in life. There's no man of God at my level who wants to pray to go through trials in marriage or battles in marriage nobody will want to pray to 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 have an a collapsed marriage or a collapsed family nobody now when you get to a level where you see some circumstances that are beyond you you have to pray that's why i say pray for leaders pray for them pray for them maybe i might be the first man of god doing this in this fashion that is how i'm led to do it and i I want you to throw your stone at me, abuse me, insult me, I will receive it. But I want to stay alive, if not for you, for my destiny. I am a mother in the Lord. We met and uh, we had a wonderful marriage. And before we started, we started by checking our genotype. She was AA, I was AS. It's difficult for me to say, but I have to say it this way and stop at a particular point. And then we had our first daughter, a wonderful child, and eventually we discovered she was sickle cell anemia. I received, you've seen me pray for people here with sickle cell anemia, and God has been doing miracles. I saw it as a, a battle and a challenge for me as your father, which is a trial of faith for me, which is not a problem. Not a problem at all. I embraced my daughter, and we had good time in my family. And that's all. We flowed with my wife and everything was okay. And then discovered in the quest of time that she was actually AS and AS. No problem. It was not a battle. But one thing led to another thing. Something happened, which I don't want to go into those details. And what happened is what we make a man to divorce his wife, scripturally, I had a backing for that. I had to cover it up to make sure that my marriage moved with your mother. And that led to so many things. So many things. You see, because I'm a man of God, I cannot divorce my wife. Because if I do, all of you will say a man of God is divorcing his wife. I chew it as a pill. But eventually it brought an unholy child into the matrimony, which became a pill for me to chew. I'm not wanting you to judge my wife or judge anything. I just want you to just know. It led to that and brought me. We had serious battles here and there. Families, interventions and everything. We covered it. We would have not gotten to this point today if my wife had listened to me when we had the battle. I also went out and have a child outside wedlock. And then... It became a battle in the family. And so, this battle has become a big one that both some men of God are taking advantage of this battle, of that battle, and sons who are under me, who are very bad, are feed on this battle. We've tried, I've tried for seven years to stable the vehicle, but it has not been. I want you to take the blame to be on me, but I want you to know that 
it started from this point to that point as it is now it has become a pain because when your wife begin to fight you on everywhere you go insulting you throwing you, after that i said don't fight me let's solve this problem in the secret if we cannot solve it i'll come to the world i'll confess my sin to the world receive the insults and enter the marriage and that is what i'm doing today because the battle is bad he has pushed me to this point today that i'm confessing to the whole world i want the world to know i want you to insult me but i said the day i open up to the world of what she because this battle didn't start as if papa started the battle she pushed me to this and um, i covered her up and i did not divorce her and when mine came she threw me to the wall sending everywhere i go my wife is calling people telling people sending pictures sending this i feel it's so bad because i'm not sleeping i'm not sleeping i'm not sleeping at all and then children who don't know my story are insulting me unnecessarily i felt i want to end the struggle i want it to be on media insult me the way you want to insult me i accept the blame i'm not going to fight my wife i'm not going to fight her. but i said the day you push i pleaded with her for seven years i've knelt down i begged her i pleaded but she chose to make me a laughing stock before people and i said to her the day i come up to the air and say this thing to the people it marks the end of the union because we cannot cover me in this place. Can I can I talk? If you are not in my shoe, if you are not in my shoe, you will not be able to talk the way I'm talking. Someone shot fire. You are highly welcome again. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and the amen. Yes, viewers all over the world. God bless you. Today I want to make a come a prophetic comment concerning a, your excellency prophet joshua igila if i couldn't pronounce it very well igila or igila please permit me pardon me of uh, the general overseer of uh, champion royal assembly abuja nigeria precisely here uh, you can hear from the horse's mouth the temptations and trial kicking around this wonderful great man of God. Well, I want you to listen because it's a message to the body of Christ. It's a message to many people. Number one, I hear people criticizing him, condemning him because of the confession he made openly. Some people are calling him all sort of names, some are recommending him, but I want to let you know. Anybody that is condemning Prophet Joshua in Gila because of this confession is suffering from what I call religious epidemic madness disease. Or maybe that person is mentally sick. You see, I'm going somewhere, I will analyze some certain things. My topic concerning this thing says Mark chapter 5 from 1 to 13. Mark chapter 5 from 1 to 13. You will hear the story of a madman that was possessed with many legions of demons. They came to Jesus and have an encounter to Jesus. And Jesus, they, when they saw Jesus, said, Why have you come to kill us? The demons were shouting from the madman. Why have you come to kill us? Because when you talk of madness, you talk of spiritual madman among madmen. That was the level of that man. But when they came to Jesus, he would shout, Why have you come to this place? Jesus said, Shut up! Jesus asked them, he started making some negotiation with the demon. What do you want? Because I want you to leave this, but the demon says, You can send us to the pigs here, the swine. In the water so that we can go peacefully jesus oh yeah go now all of them enter the water there was a man that was uh, taking care of those uh, flocks of uh, uh, pigs there and all of them entered into the whole speech about bible said more than two thousand demons was in one person 
and immediately the insane man got himself and the madness stopped. And this brought me to a topic I titled This Religious Madness Must Stop. This religious madness must stop. All right, I'm coming. Look at the commentary of that uh, confession of that man of God. A great and wonderful man of God. I still respect him. Number one, the wife committed sin, according to him. Went outside the marriage and got child. Because when the, the first time they went into that marriage, uh, uh, he discovered that the wife was AS and AS, and they produced a child that was sickle cell. The had sickle cell. Now, I want to tell you know something. Jesus says, be wise as serpent and harmless as dove. In the book of Matthew. But under the supervision of the Holy Ghost Apostolic Anointing, I am telling you that we need to be wiser than the serpent, not to equalize the wisdom, and yet be harmless as though. Satan moves with wisdom. He knows a great man of God, a child of God, he knows your destiny. So he can do anything and plant anything around you to stop you ahead of time. But children of God doesn't lose conscious. We just live our life the way we live. Like a lot of people has made mistakes. When this man of God discovered that the technology or scientific proof that this is AS, AS, automatically they will produce single. Why should you go ahead with that marriage? Can't you see that that marriage is a trap to you? All right, you maybe one religious thing is made you to continue or love, whatever you may call it. And later this woman went out and got a child. You also went out and got your own child. And then you come back after seven years, a lot of things has been happening. You cover your wife. See. You did not escalate it. You did not let people, you did not castigate her. You did not divorce her. Because you say that if you divorce her, people will talk. That is what I call the religious epidemic madness. People are confused. Religion is not Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. We should separate some certain things from Christianity. Our Father schools us in error. We have come with the knowledge of apostolic teachings, with the knowledge of the Holy Ghost embassy, to uproot the errors that our founding fathers deposited in Christianity. This is one of them. When you see reality on ground, religion will not allow you to take it off. You can pack. Business. The way I saw the whole saga, man of God, with due respect to you, you will have stopped this marriage earlier time. I want you to go and Google my message. I know some people told me that you have come across that message. Google it. Who ordained your marriage? Part one, part two, part three. Who ordained your marriage? You will get closer to what I told you there. I'm telling you there now because what you are taking now is exactly what that message says. This is an action you would have taken earlier, seeing that you made a mistake in marriage. And they are telling us that what God joined together, let no man put us on that. Who told you that every marriage was joined by God because a, a pastor or a bishop or a reverend father pronounced your husband and wife and said, What God joined together, let no man put us under? Who told you that all marriages were joined by God? You don't even know the man, the, uh, the spirit or angel, the anointing guiding the pastor or the reverend father that ordained your marriage. This our religion has been combined with Christianity and there is confusion everywhere. I'm going somewhere. You made a mistake in marriage. Because you are a man of God, people were telling you, oh, you can't do this. You can't if you divorce your wife. Listen, what you are doing is not divorce. Separation is different from divorce. I don't understand. People should go to the dictionary and understand the meaning of divorce and separation. You would have separated yourself from this marriage. If the, if the world call it divorce, that's Concisely. Every mistake must be revised, including marriage. Let me give you a bombshell. When I was praying for this wonderful man of God, 
Say, Father, what is this? A general overseer confessing like this. God told me that the world does not know that I don't take marriage institution serious in heaven the way we are taking it in religious uh, 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 circle, especially in Africa, especially in Nigeria. God does not take marriage serious in heaven. <laughs> People will be confused. Which man of God is talking like this? He doesn't take it serious. It's not that it's not serious. I'm talking about the level of seriousness, the level of archaic seriousness we are taking marriage. God does not take it because he told me there is no marriage in heaven where we are going. There is nothing like marrying of husband and wife there. So if it is something institution that is so serious, God will have gotten married. Angels would have gotten married. If there is any problem, judgment, God will take it to heaven. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, no party will bring judgment or tell you about husband and wife in heaven. Jesus said they don't marry in heaven. Even in Nigeria, here, there is a religious a, a church that recognizes the institution of Jesus. Catholic church, reverend fathers, bishop, they don't marry. If marriage is a very serious institution, why is it that reverend fathers are not married? Why are they not engaging in marriage? They see it as something that we end in this world. They want to make heaven like God. Anything that is not being practicalized in heaven and God gave it to us here is not something we take so much serious and attached to. The calling of any man of God is higher than your marriage. The calling of any man of God, especially prophets, is higher than your marriage. But today you will see churches trying to bring marriage and the calling of God together, the polarizing them. Be wiser than the serpent. When they will trap you in marriage and you know that you made a mistake, please correct it. It is no way in the Bible that God says if you marry more than one wife, one wife is a sin. Pastor can marry more than one wife. A leader of church can marry one wife. You can marry two wives. You can marry as far as you cannot take care. If you make a mistake also, you can also go ahead. Abraham married two wives. Even his own husband, God did not kill him. He's in heaven today. And God said that my name shall be called God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob married three wives or two. If I'm not mistaken, Isaac, the same thing. David married two wives, including the wife of another person. That one was a previous sin in sight of God. He left his wife and went to, took another person's wife. That one is a pure sin. But yet, God forgave him for that mistake. And devil is in heaven. Today we are calling the son of Jesus, the son of David. God said his name shall be called the son of David. The root of David. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If these people committed something that is, that is serious, God will not use his name to be memorial, to be calling as a memorial name. Let us reason and have wisdom of God when we talk. We are eradicating rubbish and madness in religious body, in church and in the body of Christ. We are removing religion. We are planting Christianity, apostolic anointing under the Holy Ghost supervision. If you make a mistake, there is no way, there is no way you will see commandment of God or laws being written in the New Testament. The claw of marriage was written in the Old Testament. The New Testament is an apostolic flying anointing. It's a Holy Ghost ministry. It's a mysterious ministry after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So I'm coming back to my your excellency, my colleague, the man of God, Prophet Joshua Igila, and other men of God that may have been in this situation. Please, my my, my Lord, you made the right thing. You are not out of line. People are criticizing and talking against him. Do you know what this man has been passing through over seven years? The legend that is no more sleeping. And people are telling you, you can't stop, you are a man of God, you can't stop this marriage. Imagine a man of God kneel down and be, and be begging the wife, I have sinned against you. And he made a mistake. He confessed. He had a, a, a for, even for him to come out to, 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 to confess it in the whole world like this, it shows that this is a man of God. He wouldn't have done that. Another religious madness. I'm sorry to use that word, sir. You wouldn't have come out to confess to the whole world. There is no way a Bible says you should confess to the whole world. When you sin against God, go to back to God and confess your sins and obtain mercy from Him. You don't need to go on air and start telling the whole world about your secret, I mean, uh, uh, marriage life. 
This is part of religious epidemic madness disease I am calling about. We need to eradicate it, uproot it from the body of Christ. The whole world is hearing you. Mind you that inside the whole world there are a lot of sinners or forty people. Killers are even condemning the holy man of God. Are you confessing to them to have mercy on you? No! It's a wrong decision. Please, sir, wherever you may be, don't come on air again to say anything concerning that your marriage. Highest thing you can do, you can call the ministers or elders or executive of the church and confess your sins. That's all. You don't need to go out there and tell the whole world. Or you can leave the good back to your God. Confess yourself. Once God has forgiven you, forget about everybody. You don't want them. They are not the ones that will forgive you. It's an error for you to do. Come on air. This is your private life. If your wife is making such mistakes, you shouldn't have followed her. But I know what you are passing through because this, the kingdom of serpentine kingdom, they set you up with this woman. That was why she called herself a pastor and she cannot be able to forgive you. And But you forgive her her own. It wasn't a mistake, let me tell you. I'm a prophet. I have gone spiritual to examine what is all that was going on around you. It wasn't a mistake. What you did was originally planned by God. <laughs> People will say, are you, talk, are you a man of God at all? Yes, I am. I will prove to you in the Bible. It was originally Manufactured by God, inspired to save you. I am coming there. If when Abraham got married, there was no child, and he went out of his way to impregnate his own housemate, and they got child from him. Trouble started in the family. The wife said, You should chase this one away. But when God came in, he said, Abraham, okay, you have seen the trouble. Okay, you can send this child away as your wife has said. Go there is in the book of Genesis. They sent that child, Ishmael, out of the family. And he went outside the desert and was crying with the child. The God went in the bush, in the wilderness, where this Ishmael and the son was. And he blessed that child and comforted that woman. It wasn't the wish of Abraham to send Ishmael out. That was where Muslims and Christians started. Ishmael was their father. That was why Muslims, they believe in Abraham, they don't believe in Jesus. But God told uh, Sarah, I am going to give you a child that will come out of your own womb. Now I want you to understand. But inside the family, they are quarreling. Outside, the God blessed Muslims. He blessed Ishmael, the Hagar, the mother. Hagar, the mother. He went ahead and blessed Sarah and then gave him Isaac. From Isaac, we got Jesus. Christianity came in. That was why the quarrel of Christian and Muslim started from the beginning. Nobody can stop it except God. But Christians and Muslims, they are the same father. Different mother, polygamy. Polygamous family is not the same. So, how am I saying? It has been arranged in heaven because if God does not want that Ishmael, he would have killed him. Am I making sense, somebody? If God doesn't want that wife, the housemaid that was pregnant by Abraham, God would have killed that child. God would have killed that woman. Or he would not even allow that generation to come out. But unknown to Abraham and Sarah that this mistake, is I call it a divine mistake in handling divine things. When, there is, you, when you make a mistake in handling divine things, automatically, many times, you will see the will of God out. So, your excellency, sir, Prophet Joshua, you are not out of line. Stop crying. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Your ministry will not go down. Your church will not go down. Anybody that is criticizing you or condemning you is either mentalist or an agent of serpentine kingdom. Or that that person is suffering from what I call religious epidemic madness. You should ignore them. Please don't come out on air to speak concerning your marriage and private life. Nobody is your God. Nobody call you. You are calling his hand and that marriage. You have taken the right decision. Because I know you know that that is not your wife. Because God must have told you, this is my wife, or this is not my wife. So you made a mistake. God did not join that marriage together. Because if God joined that marriage together, look at the characteristics of a wife. A wife that is not submitting to the husband is not a wife. There are characteristics of a wife. There are characteristics of a husband. If this man of God will come out on earth to, to confess and to do this kind of thing, it shows that this man has been passing through hellfire in his house. As people we are condemning him. 
Why did you go outside and get another issue? Why didn't you condemn Abraham when he went outside to get an issue? This is religious madness. I'm sure that when the woman left you and went to get another child outside was because of the sickle cell something. And you also did your own, you went there, you are outside. I don't say it as a mistake. Even though, we, even if it is a mistake, you need to go and confess it to God and say to him, because if it was a mistake, God would have killed that child. Two of you got outside the marriage. So it simply means that there is a serpentine power that possesses that woman. They set you up in the spiritual kingdom. They shot you an arrow. That was why you are making open confession like this. That is not necessary. I'm not condoning sin. Somebody say, are you supporting sin? No, I'm not supporting sin. But let me tell you, this man would have settled this matter with God alone. And you have confessed to his wife, and he refused. He started bombarding and criticizing you, taking you to media everywhere just because you made a mistake. It's a it's a capital sign that this is not your wife. A wife will tolerate the husband. A, a husband to, to you will tolerate the wife. But anyone that God did not, did not join together, you begin to see all these characteristics. So there is no foundation of love in the marriage. The woman is going her own way. Man is going. It's a typical mistake. Jewish would have stopped this marriage for a long time. But it is not late. Now you have decided to end this marriage. Some people are shouting, hey, 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 hey. you are a man of God. The uh, Bible says, don't, don't divorce. Who told you? What God joined together, let no man put us on. They will start setting up a reconciliation committee now to bring you and the woman back again. Come in, man of God, don't go back to that marriage. I am, as I'm ministering to you, I'm ministering to many pastors that are in this situation, dying in silence. There are many men of God that are in this problem. They are dying in silence because of what church will say, what religious body will say. Have you asked yourself what Jesus says? God, they will tell you what God joined together, let no man put us under. Did God join the marriage? The Bible says the blessings of God, he added no sorrow in it. The blessings of God, he added no sorrow in it. So if God gave you a wife or a husband, there must be characteristics of a husband towards the wife. There must be characteristics of a wife towards the husband. You were staying a little over seven years without your wife. What do you want him to do? The people that are criticizing him, condemning him. Even people that are criticizing you, you are holier than them. That is why I say you shouldn't have confessed with the microphone. They are not your God. There is no way the Bible says you must confess with the microphone. Go back to your God and confess your sins. And then if God forgives you, good, I'm not the Almighty God. If He didn't forgive you, settle it with Him. You have done the right thing to confess to your husband and your wife and ask for him to have forgiveness to show you the wickedness of this religion, the foolishness of the leaders of church and so-called pastor. Her wife must be a pastor and she refused to forgive unforgiveness. A pastor that cannot forgive the mistake of his husband. But your husband forgive when you made a mistake. This is what I call religious epidemic madness. This madness was stop in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I, 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 I'm, as I'm wrapping up, I just want to make this point clear to you. Please, sir, or anybody that is listening to me now, you have a similar problem. Don't wait for your mistake to kill you before you make that mistake. There are go and go go who ordained you by a pastor. Who ordained you? Who ordained your marriage? Who ordained your marriage? Part one, part two, part three. You will get a lot of things. God spoke to me. This religious epidemic madness must stop. The, the, our father school us in error. If you marry one wife and is moving for you, glory be to God. I love that. That's perfection. But these five hands are not equal. God did not create these hands are equal. It shows that there are people that will be here. There are people that will be this level. There are people that will be this level. There are people that will be this level. Some people will be here. Every marriage cannot be the same line. So anywhere you found yourself, find solution to the problem. If marriage is so serious, why is it that Jesus did not marry when he came to the end? Why is it that the Almighty God did not marry? It's not, they, they don't take it serious. It's going to end in this world. It's just like somebody get money, get flat chicken, get restored building. God just made marriage to be for procreation. 
It doesn't take it seriously in heaven on the last day. Nobody will tell you how you took care of your wife, how you took care of your husband, those sort of rubbish. But that does not mean that we will give Satan a chance to put down a man of God. Your calling is higher than your marriage. You don't go to hellfire because you got married. God call you. If you go to 2 Kings chapter 13, 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 21 and 22, you will see a man of God called Elisha when he died. The, 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 the anointing was in the grave performing miracle. They brought another person that was dead inside the burial ground. When they were looking for a place to dug a hole to bury that person. They dropped a coffin on the bone on the bowl of, of, of the grave of Elisha. Immediately they got to touch the grave of Elisha, the dead man came back to life. You see, for the body of Elisha is decaying. Or being decayed already. But his anointing was still working, resurrecting something that was tied on it. You are calling, your anointing is greater than anything on earth. It's greater than your marriage, it's greater than your body. The institution of the way the church is taking marriage today. So a man of God that is highly anointed that made a mistake, you cannot correct it. A woman of God that is called by God and your husband is obstructing and causing all kinds of confusion in that marriage, you cannot correct it. It's a taboo. It's a wrong. It's, a, it's an error. If God called you, he did not call you with the same man, with the same woman and the same man. You, when you was born, your wife was not there. When you was born, your husband was not there. Therefore, your calling is higher than your marriage. That marriage will perish on earth. It's not going to heaven. But your calling will move to heaven. Come on, are you hearing me, somebody? Let us come out of this madness. The body of Christ is fine. You saw a man of God passing through the earth, people are castigating and throwing stone on him. Tell me all of you that are condemning Prophet Joshua and Gila. Let you be the first person to cast on him if there is no sin in your life. If you have not committed any sin, be the first person to throw stone on him. Christians persecuting Christians. That is what we are saying today. Many people, if there is no repentance, we will go to hellfire. This man did the right thing. Your Excellency, sir. Prophet Joshua, you did the right thing. No, don't condemn yourself. Don't cry again. Don't start sleeping very well. Move your church forward. If the second wife you have gotten now is the right person for you, you ask God and is the right person. Go ahead with your marriage. Go ahead with your calling. Don't allow marriage to hinder the call of God in your life. For that call is greater than that marriage. It's greater than any woman. It's greater than any body. It's greater than that members that are telling you to go ahead with the marriage. Don't listen to them. Because devil cannot be born again. It was a total error. The marriage was total mistake. Now, I have something here to tell you also. You plead him with your wife. You started with the marriage of error. You started with a mistake. You know that this marriage is AS, AS, technology into the topless of God, and you went ahead. It was a mistake. Maybe one thing or the other led you to wonder that is the, the serpentine arrow. This thing was spiritually masterminded. They knew that you are going to be great. You are going to bombard the kingdom of darkness with that amount. So they want to use that woman to stop you. Devil is wise. But thank God for Jesus that came. To restore all things back. If that woman is your wife, after you have confessed to her and asked for forgiveness, she will have forgiven you. She will not even let any other person. She will carry the whole family, both the children you born outside. You will reconcile the whole family and move forward. That is how to know a wife, material. And but when the time she sin against you, you forgive her to show you a man of God. So now, can you see the characteristics of a wife that is lacking there? God did not join that marriage. Therefore, God, my God sent me to you. The arrow they shot you to come openly to, to, to confess the whole thing. It was an arrow. I saw it in the spirit. Please, I buy that arrow. I command that arrow to get out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not trap you again. If you make a mistake, everybody should go his way. Religion body, church leaders will tell you it's an abomination. A holy man of God. A man of God is perfect. Every man of God has blood flowing in your veins. I am not encouraging sin. 
But I have come to encourage you, man of God. Your ministry now will begin to see overflow. You will begin, their plan is to kill your mission, to destroy the altar of God, the anointing of God in your life. But they will not succeed. That is what I call serpentine kingdom. In action, you are in that life. Look at how to, they want to mesmerize mes 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 your life through marriage. Oh my God. Man of God, you are coming out of it. And I'm talking to many men of God that are passing through this thing. If you make any mistake in marriage and it's affecting your calling, please go back to the Lord and ask. If that person is not your wife, it's not your husband, and make it very correct it peacefully. There's no need of fighting. We can correct a marriage error peacefully. We can separate this thing. If you call it that one, that one is not for you. I call it separation. Because of what? Error. Another important factor, I have said it and repeated again. Let no man of God come on air to confess your mistakes in the privacy. No, the people you are confessing to, they are not the Almighty God. The Bible says, confess your sins to the Lord, not to the whole world. That is why I like Catholic Church. I am talking in the area of the, the, the covenant of the, 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 the reverend fathers and bishops and the monsignors and so on. No reverend father has any marriage problem or sexual problem. You will hear any bishop criticizing or bringing it to the media or to the whole world to confess their sins. It can't happen. That I had that even in the canon law, I had it from the top Catholics that it's a law that even if you call the reverend father right handed, sinning or committing sexual sins that nobody should break it out to the world. They will settle it inside secretly and say death. And they go back to the Lord for confession of sins. And if there is any penance, they will give the reverend father. And they move the gospel forward. Because the calling of God upon that reverend father is higher than those activities. We should do this. We should be wiser than the serpent. The kingdom of death and darkness is changing tactics. Now, there are tactics to use Marriage to scatter the kingdom of God, but they cannot succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to minister on forgiveness. Had you been that this woman forgave this man, you will not come to this level. Wherever you are, are watching the viewers all over the world, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please try to have forgiveness spirit in the time of problems like this. Not only in marriage, try to have forgiveness. If you say you are calling the name of Jesus Christ, Forgive. Even if you don't want to continue with that man, forgiveness is different is still, uh, that, uh, and uh, living with the same person. You can forgive somebody, say, but I cannot live with you anymore. We are not meant to be husband and wife. You can forgive your husband, you can forgive your wife, but you can now put restriction. We can no longer live together. God did not create me and you to live in one room. Because if you continue with that marriage, Life, one life must be one day, serious casualty will happen in the home. There's no two ways about it. So, thank God that this man of God came and ended his marriage like this. If he continued with his marriage, disaster will locate him one day. But he was so wise now, earlier now, because he had the end continued like this. Either the man of God will die or the woman will die. Then, who is who game? That's where I'm going. I'm here to save people, I'm here to save life. The devil came to kill and destroy and steal. But Jesus came that we might have life. Have it more abundantly. That is why I'm telling to people. And finally, I'm talking to everyone. Criticizers, condemners, condemn judges. People that condemn Prophet Joshua. Be careful wherever you may be. I have some people in social media condemning him, talking all kinds of rubbish. He said, humanizer, is this, is that. Let me warn you. Bible says it's a 105 verse 15. Psalm 105 verse 15. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God did not say, it's, it's, it, but in this area you can touch. No. Every area you have no right to judge that man of God. You have no right to condemn him. You are bringing fire and condemnation upon yourself. Go and face your own life. If there is any help you can help, help him out. There are every nobody is above temptation, nobody is above trial. Even Jesus, you are calling. One day he faced temptation and trial. So, Prophet Joshua is facing his own temptation and trial. And I have come to encourage him. He did the right thing. He did not commit any offense. 
It was a master mind. It was a manipulation, sorry, manipulation from serpentine kingdom that put him into this mess. But I'm telling you very soon, God will remove that man of God. God will bring him back to the reality of his calling. So some of you that are criticizing him, uh, you are a fake pastor, you are a fake prophet, what are you? You that is a fake uh, original man of God, go to Jesus and get power and solve people's problems. Deliver people. People are suffering. People are passing through a lot of problems. So you can go and bring the original power and use it to deliver people. We can call you a genuine pastor and a genuine prophet. Not sit down in your room and making videos and castigating a man of God that you know he has gone far in blessing life and delivering people. And the power is still intact. There is no amount of sin, no amount of manipulation that can remove atom of anointing of that man of God. Because anointing is different, the marriage is different. This is what you people don't know. And if you look at people that are condemning him, they are full of good uh, Christians. Even Muslims cannot even condemn this man of God. And yet you are telling me you will make heaven. Let me tell you, many Christians will end up in heaven. Many of believers will go to heaven before many Christians that I'm seeing today. Because their Christianity is not in their heart, it's only in their mouth. May God deliver us. This madness, religious madness, must stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop condemning a man of God. Stop attacking men of God. Because you see, some of them will say they are using fake power. They are using power to the why he doesn't want the wife again. It's because he's a narcotic man. He is using other ladies to reinforce his wife. Who told you? When you have a internal crisis, you don't have affection to the next person to you. What do you do? To make love with the wife is power. When you are quarreling with somebody, can you make love with him or her? I'm asking you that I condemn him. Over seven years, you don't want to know what this man was passing through. Do you know what this man has been passing through in his inner side of the marriage? You people will just sit there and be talking nonsense. May God deliver you. I want everyone that is condemning that man, if you don't repent, if you don't repent or cease from condemning him and criticizing him, fire of Jehovah will locate all of you one by one. Go and ask uh, when Apostle Joseph Chuleman has his own case with somebody that is called Steph Stephanie. Single handedly, I told them, I will pull that lady down with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I called that lady, I told them, You must confess because I, I saw the kingdom where she belongs to. Who sent her to, 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 to I mean, uh, uh, set that man of God up? But later you saw the whole thing. The woman, the lady in quote, came out openly and confessed. I have the evidence here. That she was being used by powerful politicians to set up Apostle Johnson Suleiman. After I have sent fire to bombard the kingdom, all of you that are serpentine agents, that are attacking the, 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 the great and genuine man of God, Prophet Joshua Gela, the geo of royal, I mean, champion royal assembly, all of you serpents, I am telling you single handedly, heaven will pull you down completely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You people can cross the gate of hell shall not prevail against us. We are born to conquer. This man of God will not die. Prophet, your excellency, sir, prophet, pastor, Joshua in Gila, you will not die. You will live to glorify the name of God. Thank you, my listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, please share this message to all your medias. Every social media, every television, whatever medium you can use to make sure that many people receive this message. And then some of you that are passing through the same thing, you are coming out of that mess. Go and go hold my message. Where the one I titled, Who ordained your marriage? Then you will understand if you are passing through anything, not only men of God, children of God passing through anything in marriage, go on that, that side, you will get a part one, part two, part three. If there's any person you call me online, online, I'm still humble son of God. You are one person, Pastor Ogonna, Ogonna. I want to rule why. I've not changed. Until I come your way next week again with another powerful edition, as our custom, keep on watching the wind of miracles hour. God bless you. We are praying for that man of God, and we are praying for his church. He will not be disgraced. He will not be destroyed. I encourage him to do and go ahead with his marriage, new wife. Go ahead with your church. Go ahead with your gospel. The Almighty God is the one that is the chief judge that will judge the whole matter. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let somebody shout hallelujah.